friends, welcome to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about becoming a uh, medical coder and what it takes to be certified, um, what all the types of information you need to know. So I'm um, just going to start with, you know, uh, basic information as far as what is a medical coder um, or what is medical coding. So medical coding is uh, the recovery of uh, medical records information um, and like, you know, whatever the doctor or the hospital or what the doctor um, or testing, all that information that gets put into your records, um, that coder would, their job would be to basically go over that um, medical information and interpret it and um convert that information into uh, codes. So these codes are for the insurance company when the claim is submitted um, so that they understand what was done, what the diagnosis was and things like that. And what you would, they would be broken down into um, if it's if it's at a doctor's office, it would be called a CPT code, um, which is a procedure code. And in that, um, it may include like office visits, x-ray, uh, lab work, anything like that. There's a specific code for whatever was done in that office, even uh, codes that's considered surgery. And also they will be focusing on um, a diagnosis code and those codes, um, you know, will tell exactly what was wrong with you or what you came in complaining about. And if it's a um, uh, hospital, um, hospitals have their specific codes as well, just like the CPT codes and the, uh, the diagnosis code is called an ICD-10. Um, so I would just be going over um, what it takes to learn this information. And uh, in order to get these types of jobs, you would have to go through a certification process. So I'm going to, um, at some point, I'm going to go in to the um, website of where you would um, get information about the certification and also just recommend or show you some online um, places that you can take these classes. Um, you can also look, um, check with your local community college, universities, or um, a specialty schools, tech schools um, that may offer these courses as well. Um, the average time for this, I believe, um, I saw it was uh, approximately four to six months. I think it's more around four months to complete these courses. And then that would prepare you for the certification. And when you do the certification, it does cost something. And uh, you can't take it more than once. If you failed the first time, you can't take it more than once. And we will check that out on that website. And when we're looking at the websites, um, um, in particular, I'm going to go to a website, A-H-I-M-A, which stands for American Health Information Management Association. And that's where you would uh, take your test for your certification. I'm going to go ahead and take you over that now uh, because some of the other terms uh, that I want to mention is already on that website. And that way we can break it down and show you um, what these things mean. So let's go on over there. All right, so before we go to AHIMA's website, I just wanted to show you two places that I saw that offer online um, training for the coding um, medical coders. Um, this one is Bryan University. And um, I just chose that because I noticed, um, I like what they offered and I noticed that they were online. So, you know, you don't have to worry about being in a class. You can get that training or that um, education online. And another one 
is AAPC, and they are also um, online for that um, training to prepare you for your um, certification exam. So those are just two. And of course, like I said, you can check in your area to see what local um, schools may offer it. I think most of them offer online classes anyway. So um, if you wanna do it local, you can do that as well. So let's go into the AHIMA website and see what it takes to be certified once you get your classes out of the way. All right, so this is ahima.org. And on their website, they do, um, this is the landing page. So what you would do is go into certifications and careers. And I clicked on the certification um, exams. And under that, it gives you information about the exam, um, how, the questions were gonna, are gonna be and information like that. But I mainly wanted you to see like the different terms because if you're gonna be applying for um, coding jobs, they will have these terms as far as the requirements and the certifications that you need. So you would need to understand what it is that you're, that you're um, certifying for, what you would need and for what type of job. So when you see CCA, that means Certified Coding Associate. Coding professionals who hold the CCA credential have demonstrated coding competency across all settings, including hospitals and physician practices. Since 2002, the CCA designation has been a nationally recognized standard of achievement in the health information management field. And whenever you see the HIM, a lot of times you'll see that on hospital job openings. Um, that stands for health information management. Uh, CCAs exhibit a level of commitment, competency, and professional capability that is valued by employers, demonstrate a commitment to coding profession, distinguish themselves from others as having passed AHIMA's vigorous, I'm sorry, rigorous CCA exam. Uh, eligibility to be a CCA candidate must have a high school diploma or equivalent to sit for the CCA exam. While not required, at least one of the following is recommended. Six months coding experience directly applying codes, completion of an AHIMA approved coding program, a PCAP program, a completion of other coding training program to include anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, basic ICD diagnostic procedure and basic CPT coding. And um, some experience that you could get, um, me personally, I started out working for, um, well, at that time it was Blue Cross Blue Shield. Now you know it as Anthem, uh, or Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I started out in the claims processing um, area. And in that, in the training for that, we had intense uh, medical terminology and ICD-9 and CPT um, coding at that time, it wasn't CPT-10. I forget what number it was. Uh, CPT coding um, training. And in that training, you understood what a CPT code, ICD-9 code is. Um, that uh, We'll go back over. ICD-9 is for diagnosis. Um, CPT is for the particular procedure. Um, we understood When we got out of that training, we understood that if you see the eight, CPT code, that's labs. The nines is for office visits or office uh, related um, things like that. Like the sevens is for radiology. So um, those are the type of things you can learn. So if you go out or if you're already working at a insurance company in, in their claims department, uh, that's something to consider if you're looking to get a foot in the door uh, while you're going to school to get your certification. That will be one area uh, 
one place of employment that you would definitely get some experience in and it would help you when it comes to the eligibility requirements for this CCA. And um, also the medical terminology, they teach you a lot about that. Um, at least they did. I can't imagine anything changing. But uh, we had an intense medical terminology class that we had to take because if you're processing claims, medical claims, uh, you need to understand what you're looking at and what you're processing and having paid for. So that's one avenue you can take um, when you're trying to get your, your requirements satisfied. And then you would apply for the exam and non-member price. Um, you can become a member of the AHIMA, but non-member price is $299. Uh, member price is $199. And you do have to apply to take the certification um, associate um, exam. And then it just talks about the exam and the exam specifications. Um, and you do have to have these code books and, and it has to be an updated one. So the 2023 code books will go into effect as of May 1. So those are out now. All exams delivered on and after May 1 will be required to have the 2023 code books uh, from the 2023 code book list. And that's important because you're not going to keep all those codes in your brain. So you're going to have to have that book and understand how to look it up, look up the right code based on the medical information that you're reviewing. All right. So, um, and it sounds more difficult than it is. Um, Again, I did not go get my certification. I just stayed in that field of medical billing or um, claims processing, but I do know people that went on and got their certification. And, um, you know, it's not a drastically hard process as far as um, understanding. All right, so CCS, that term is for a certified coding specialist. And a coding specialists are skilled in classifying medical data from patients' records, often in hospital settings, but also in a variety of other healthcare settings. The CCS credential demonstrates a practitioner's test, tested skills in data quality and accuracy, as well as mastery of coding proficiency. The CCS certification is a natural progression for professionals experienced in coding inpatient and outpatient records. Coding specialists create coded data used by hospitals and medical providers to obtain reimbursement from insurance companies or government programs such as Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, CCS is review patient records and assign numeric codes for each diagnosis and procedure possess expertise in the ICD-10, uh, CM, and CM stands for, or what well, the whole thing stands for, International Classification of Diseases, that's what the ICD is for, and the 10 is for the 10th revision. Uh, clinical modification is what the CM stands for, and you'll also see the PC, which refers to um, the hospitals. Um, our verse in medical terminology, disease process and uh, pharmacology concepts. And the eligibility requirements for that, um, while not required, one of the following are recommended to sit for the CCS exam, complete courses in all the following topics, anatomy and physiology, path pathophysiology, pharmacology, medical terminology, reimbursement methodology, intermediate advanced ICD diagnostic coding, and procedure coding and medical services. And HIC picks when you see HCPCS, that's for what's called DME, um, uh, which is medical equipment. Plus uh, one year of coding experience directly applying codes 
or a minimum of two years of related coding experience directly applying codes or the CCA credential plus one year of coding experience directly applying codes or hold a coding credential from another certifying organization plus one year of coding experience directly applying codes or hold a CCSP, RHIT or RHIA credential. All right, and when you apply for that exam, um, non-member price is $399, and member price is $299. And it just goes over the exam information. And the CCSP, that one is for Certified Coding Specialist Physician-Based. And this information is pretty much the same uh, coding specialist, physician-based professionals perform coding in physician offices, group practices, multi-special clinics, or specialty centers. And they review patient records, assign numeric codes for each diagnosis and procedure, and um, pretty much the same as the other one there. And then the RHIT, that stands for Registered Health Information Technician. Uh, while most RHITs work in hospitals, they are also found in other healthcare settings, including office-based physician practices, nursing homes, home health agencies, mental health facilities, and public health agencies. RHITs may also be employed in any organization that uses patient data or health information, such as pharmaceutical companies, law and insurance firms, and health products vendors. And RHITs uh, ensure the quality of medical health records by verifying their completeness, accuracy, and proper entry into computer systems. So they are basically an auditor. Um, well, that's my interpretation. They use computer applications to assemble and analyze patient data for the purpose of improving patient care or controlling costs, participating in the release and access of information by authorized entities and patients, often specialize in coding diagnosis and procedures in patient records for reimbursement and research additional roles for RH and research. Additional roles for RHITs may include cancer registrar, trauma registrar, stroke registrar, et cetera, compiling and maintaining data on patients. And I have seen that um, when looking up jobs um, as far as the cancer registrar, I have seen whether RHIT um, is a requirement for that job. Uh, the eligibility requirements, candidates must meet one of the following eligibility requirements to sit for the RHIT exam. You must successfully complete the academic requirements of an associate degree level of a health information management program accredited by the Commission on, on Accreditation for Health Information and Information Management. Graduate from an HIM program approved by a foreign association which, with which AHIMA has a reciprocity agreement. All right, and the cost for that exam is $299 for member, for non-member and $229 for member. All right, so here's all the different, um, the main ones that I wanted to focus on was the CCA, the CCS, the CCSP, because um, those are the ones where you just be doing your coding for either a doctor's office or, um, you know, physician level um, facility or a hospital level facility. And this is what you go through to take your exam. And you, of course, your exam comes after you've taken the classes. All right. And let's see if I'm leaving anything out. I did not see CPC um, 
That is one that people reference. Uh, it stands for Certified Professional uh, Coder, and that's for physicians. So this may be the CCSP, may be um, the same thing as that, as the C, uh, CPC. So um, this is, you know, general information for you guys to research. Um, if this is something that you're interested in or been thinking about, just go through, take your time, take a look at it. And also, I'm going to leave a link to a really good YouTube video of a YouTuber, uh, a creator that works in this field that I found her, her video very helpful um, since she actually works in that field and can give you a lot of valuable information. So I will link hers in the description below. And so if you like the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up to um, keep the video in circulation. Also, I will leave a uh, link in the top under the little eye um, for a video that um, recommends um, companies that is currently hire, hiring stay-at-home uh, coders, medical coders. And that's another thing too, medical coders do work from home. So that's another reason why I wanted to give you this information. So um, thanks again, guys, for um, clicking on the video. I would love for you to become a subscriber if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And you guys have a great day. And um, come back on the next video. Bye.